Welcome to this Jetpack Compose playlist, Mastering MVI Clean Architecture in Android. In this series, we will learn how to build modern and powerful Android apps step by step. We will cover MVI architecture for clean and predictable UI, retrofit to call APIs and get data from the internet, room database to store data offline, Kotlin coroutines and flow for smooth background work, dependency injection to keep our code simple and testable, clean architecture to organize our app in the right way, solid principles to follow best coding practices, how to manage large-scale projects with good structure. And finally, we will build a complete demo app using everything we learned. This playlist is perfect for anyone who wants to become a better Android developer. Let us get started. Why use MVI? It helps you write cleaner code, improves app performance, and makes debugging much easier. MVI stands for Model View Intent. It's a design pattern used for managing state in Android apps. A design pattern is simply a structured way to organize code, so it's easier to maintain and scale. MVI handles state management, which means it controls how data changes and how the UI updates. It also uses unidirectional data flow, where data moves in one direction, from intent, to model, to view. This makes your UI more predictable and reduces bugs. Let's look at the key components of MVI. They are intent, model, and view, in that order. Model is the data layer. It could be a database, an API response, or any source of information. View is what the user sees. It displays the current state of the app on the screen. Intent is the user's action, like clicking a button, typing a search query, or scrolling the screen. Together, these three parts create a clean and predictable flow in your app. How does MVI work? Let's break it down step by step. Step one, the user interacts with the UI. They might click a button, type something, or trigger an event. Step two, that action becomes an intent. The intent is sent to the view model for processing. Step three, the view model talks to the model. It might fetch data from an API or a local database using a repository. Step four, the model updates the state. Once the data is ready, a new state is sent back to the view. Step five, the UI re-renders with the updated state. The user sees the latest data on screen, creating a smooth and reactive experience. What is Retrofit? Retrofit is a type-safe HTTP client for Android and Kotlin. It helps you fetch data from APIs quickly and easily. So, why use Retrofit? It simplifies API calls, so you don't have to manually handle HTTP requests. It works seamlessly with coroutines and flow, making your network calls asynchronous and efficient. Retrofit can automatically convert JSON responses into Kotlin objects, using tools like GSON or Moshi. It also supports authentication and interceptors, letting you manage headers, logging, and caching with ease. How does Retrofit work? Let's go through it step by step. Step 1 First, you define your API endpoints in an interface. This tells Retrofit what data to fetch and from where. Step 2 Then, you make API calls using Retrofit's built-in functions. No need to write complex networking code. Step 3 Retrofit receives the JSON response and converts it into Kotlin objects automatically. Step 4 You can now use that data directly in your UI, especially with Jetpack Compose. And that's it, simple, clean, and powerful. Next up, we'll learn how to set up Retrofit API in your Android project. What are coroutines? In simple terms, Kotlin coroutines help you run tasks in the background without blocking the main thread. They are faster and more efficient than using traditional threads. Coroutines are perfect for things like network calls, database operations, and other background tasks. So, why should you use coroutines? Because they make API calls non-blocking, they improve performance by running heavy work off the main thread, and they're easy to manage, thanks to something called structured concurrency. In short, coroutines help you build smooth and responsive Android apps. Flow is a reactive data stream in Kotlin. It emits multiple values over time, instead of just one. You can use Flow for continuous data updates, like fetching real-time API data observing changes in a room database, or listening to user input as it happens. So, why use Flow? Because it works perfectly with MVI and Jetpack Compose. It's also a lightweight alternative to live data and it fully supports coroutines, making it great for background tasks. 
Flow helps you build apps that react to data in real time, smoothly and efficiently. Let's take a quick look at the folder structure of our Jetpack Compose MVI project. At the top, we have the Compose underscore post package. This is the root of our main app. Inside it, we start with the D folder, short for dependency injection. Here, we define shared dependencies. App module, KT provides common dependencies. Network module, KT sets up our retrofit instance for API calls. Next is the features folder. This is where we use feature-based modularization. Each feature is organized separately, and in this example, we're looking at the posts feature. Within posts, we first have the data layer. This includes remote for API call specific to this feature. Posts API service. KT defines the API endpoints. Posts remote data source. KT handles the actual API logic repository. This layer connects the data to the rest of the app. Posts repository. KT prepares data from the API to be used in the UI. Next, we have the domain layer. This includes model, where we define business models like post model, KT. Use case, where business logic is handled in a clean and reusable way. Then comes the MVI package. This is where we manage app state using the MVI pattern. Posts intent. KT represents user actions. Posts state. KT defines various UI states like loading or error. Posts view model. KT connects it all, handling logic between state, intent, and data. Finally, we have the presentation layer. This is the UI of the app. Screen contains the screens related to posts UI contains reusable components like buttons or dialogues. This structure keeps our code clean, scalable, and easy to maintain, especially for large apps. Let's understand how MVI architecture works in a Jetpack Compose app. We start at the presentation layer with the view. This is your activity or fragment. It displays the UI, observes state from the view model using state flow, and sends user actions as intents. Next, the intent, representing actions like clicking a button or submitting a form, is sent to the view model. The view model receives the intent and manages the state. Now, based on the intent, the view model interacts with the domain layer. It calls a use case, which contains the business logic and decides what action to take. The use case then talks to the repository in the data layer. The repository acts as a data mediator. It decides whether to fetch data from a local database or a remote API, like Retrofit. The data is fetched, possibly cached, and then returned back up the chain. Once the data reaches the view model, a new state is created. This could be loading, success, error, or even no data. Finally, this updated state is sent back to the view, which re-renders the UI to show the result to the user. This unidirectional flow, from intent to state, helps keep the app predictable, testable, and easy to manage. Step 1. Set up permissions. Before we can fetch data from APIs, we need to set up the required permissions in the Android manifest. This allows the app to access the internet and make network calls. Step 2 App Level Gradle Setup In this step, we update the build, gradle.kts file. We add KSP for annotation processing and set up Hilt for dependency injection. This allows us to generate the necessary code for injecting dependencies automatically. Step 3 Add Required Libraries to App Level Gradle Now we add the core libraries we'll need for our project. We use Retrofit for making API calls, OK HTTP logging to help with network debugging, Hilt for managing dependency injection, and GSON to automatically convert JSON data into Kotlin objects. These tools make our app more powerful, efficient, and easier to manage. Step 4 System Level Gradle Setup Now, we update the build. Gradle.kts file at the project root level. Here, we enable KSP, which is needed for Hilt's code generation to work correctly. This step is essential to make sure Hilt can process annotations and generate the necessary files during build time. Step 5 Set up libs, versions, tom l. We use the libs, versions, tom l file to store all our dependencies in one place. This makes version management easier. You only need to update a version in one file, and it updates everywhere in your project. It keeps your Gradle files clean and your project more organized. Step 6 Android Manifest.xml 
In this step, we set my application as the application class in the Android Manifest.xml file. This is important because it allows Hilt to set up dependency injection across the entire app. Without this, Hilt won't know where to start initializing things. Step 7 My Application, KT. In this step, we create a class called My Application and add the at Hilt Android app annotation. This tells Hilt to start dependency injection from this point and enables it across the entire app. It's a required setup to make Hilt work properly in your project. Step 8 Main Activity, KT. We start by adding the at Android entry point annotation. This enables Hilt for dependency injection inside the activity. Step 9 Post Screen, inside the main activity, we call Post Screen, which displays the main UI of the app. This is where users will see the list of posts and interact with the app interface. Step 10 Post Intent, KT. In this step, we define the user actions for our posts feature. We do this by creating a sealed class called Post Intent. Each object inside this class represents a possible user intent, such as load posts or any other action the user might trigger. This is the first step in the MVI flow, where the user's input is captured and passed to the view model. Step 11 Post State, KT. In this step, we define the UI states for our post screen. We create a sealed class called Post State, which represents different states the UI can be in. This includes states like loading, when data is being fetched, success, when posts are successfully loaded, empty, when there's no data to show, and error, when something goes wrong. These states help the UI react clearly and consistently to every situation. Step 12 Post Model, KT. Now we define the data model for a post. In the domain layer, we create a file called Post Model, KT. This model represents a single post, with properties like id, title, and body. It's used across the app to share post data between layers, especially between the repository, use cases, and UI. Defining the model in the domain layer keeps it clean and reusable. Step 13 Post View Model, KT. In this step, we create our view model for the post screen. We extend the view model class and set up state management using state flow and shared flow. Mutable state flow is used to hold and update the current UI state. Mutable shared flow is used to collect user intents sent from the UI. Inside the handle intent function, we collect user actions in a coroutine scope, and based on the intent, we trigger the right function, for example, calling load posts when the user wants to fetch data. This keeps the flow of data unidirectional and easy to follow. Step 14 Get Post Use Case, KT. In this step, we create the use case for fetching posts. The get post use case acts as the business logic layer. It interacts with the repository and returns a flow of a list of post model. This use case helps keep our view model clean by separating logic for fetching data from how the UI handles it. By using flow, we can stream data efficiently and reactively. Step 15 Post Repository, KT. Now we implement the repository layer. In Post Repository, KT, we fetch data from the API using Retrofit. The repository makes the network call and returns a flow of a list of post model. This layer acts as a bridge between the data source and the use case, keeping everything well structured and easy to maintain. The view model never talks to the API directly, it always goes through the repository. Step 16 Post API Service, KT. In this step, we define the remote API service using Retrofit. We create an interface called Post API Service. Inside it, we declare API methods, for example, a simple add get posts to fetch all posts from the server. This service handles the network request and returns a list of posts that we'll later pass to the repository. It keeps our API logic clean, organized, and easy to test. Step 17 Network Module, KT. In this step, we set up dependency injection using Dagger Hilt. Inside Network Module, KT, we provide the core dependencies needed for network operations. This includes a retrofit instance for making API calls, an OK HTTP client for handling HTTP requests, and the post API service, which connects retrofit to our API. With this setup, Hilt can inject these dependencies wherever they're needed, like in repositories or use cases. This makes our code cleaner, modular, and easier to test. Step 18 Post Screen, 
KT. Now it's time to build the UI using Jetpack Compose. In PostScreen, KT, we create a composable function called PostScreen. Inside this screen, we collect the UI state from the PostView model using collect as state. Then, we render the UI based on the current post state. If the state is loading, we show a progress indicator. If it's success, we display the list of posts. If it's empty, we show a message. And if it's error, we show an error message or retry option. This is where the MVI flow comes together, from state to UI, fully reactive. Connect view model to UI. In this step, we connect the view model to our composable UI. We use Hilt view model to get an instance of post view model. Then, we observe the UI state using collect as state. Based on the current post state, we display the appropriate UI. Whether it's loading, showing posts, empty, or an error. This creates a smooth and reactive user experience, fully powered by Jetpack Compose and MVI.